Hi, I'm Mr. Morrow, and I'm going to teach you how to create optimal profiles for the analog pocket using the RetroTINK 4K. The RetroTINK 4K is an advanced scaler, so it is important that you read the wiki, which will be linked in the description so that you can familiarize yourself with settings. You do not need to do this every time you play the analog pocket because there are profiles included in the RetroTINK 4K. I am just making this tutorial so that you understand the process that gets you to those profiles. Now, this does require that you update the analog pocket to version 2.0 as that has enabled integer scaling for the cores. And you do require um, some knowledge of the resolutions for many of these games. And I will to use those features. In this video, I am going to teach how to make Super Game Boy, Game Gear, and Wonder Swan core profiles because those are going to be what, um, because those are other handhelds that are included with the analog pocket. So, just to start, I'm going to start with the Super Game Boy. Let's open the FPGA and load our Super Game Boy core. I'm going to use Donkey Kong. And as you can see, um, it looks it looks pretty great, and it fills up the whole screen. But if you didn't know, the the Game Boy part of it is the Game Boy is a 16, not a 16. The Game Boy is a 10 by 9 aspect ratio, and this looks much more like 4 by 3. So we do need to make some adjustments. Now, to do that, we do need to know that the Super Game Boy Core integer scales the uh, integer scales the screen five times along the horizontal and four times along the vertical, but it is also stretching it, so we need to do some adjustments on the pocket first. So hit the analog button, go to core settings, display mode, mode settings, size, and then select integer. This, again, this gives us an integer scale, but it is integer scaled five in the horizontal and four in the vertical. So on the RetroTINK 4K remote, hit the ADC button, and that will take us to the HDMI receiver setup menu. Go to input pixels and increase that to five because we know that the horizontal scaling is five. And then we are going to hit the scale button on the remote, and that is going to bring up the scaling's crop setup menu. Go down to vertical prescale and increase that to four to one fourth because we know the vertical scale is four times. Next thing you want to do is for the sake of the next few options is hit auto fill integer. Now go down to scaling mode and select auto fill integer. You are going to go to the top trim now and trim the top of the image until it hits the border of the, of the Super Game Boy screen. Go to the bottom trim and decrease that until it hits the bottom of the Super Game Boy screen. Then go to the left, increase that. And then go to the right and increase that one. Great. Now that that's centered, we can see that the original resolution of the game is going to be 256 by 223, which is the exact resolution of Super Game Boy on an authentic Super Nintendo, on an authentic Super Nintendo. However, the scaling is off. It is 11.25 by 9. It's supposed to be 9 by 9 for square pixels, which is why the current Game Boy screen looks wide. So what you want to do is go to scaling mode, go to freeform, and we are going to make this an integer scale of 9 by 9 for square pixels for the correct look for Super Game Boy. Okay. Now that that's set, as you can see, this is perfectly integer scaled. The Game Boy portion of this is a perfect 10 by 9 aspect ratio with square pixels. And we can confirm that by hitting the SFX button on the RetroTANK 4K, which brings up the processing effects menu. And we want to hit, go down to function until we hit mono one. 
and you should be able to see that the pixels are square pixels. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Because you might want to use, you might want to make the Game Boy portion of the screen bigger, but retain the sum of the Super Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo overlay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the scale menu on the remote, and on top trim, we are going to hit, you are going to decrease the trim until we hit the bottom of the Game Boy screen. And then on the bottom, sorry, adjust the top trim until you hit the top of the Game Boy screen. Adjust the bottom trim until you hit the bottom of the Game Boy screen. And then um, it is going to be taller than it is wide. But what we are going to do is go down to vertical factor and increase that to 15. There you go. And then increase the horizontal factor to 15 as well. Now this is going to give you perfect square integer, sorry, perfect square pixels that are 15 times the size of the original Game Boy. And it also leaves some room for the Super Game Boy overlay on the side so that you can retain some of the color. Um, if you do not want to do any of this and you want to use the analog's built-in filters, that is fine as well, but you are able to use the LCD function for a little bit more of an authentic look. However, you are not able to load up analog pocket filters while you are using this because the colors will not look correct. It looks sort of cool sometimes, but it just won't be correct. So, and here's another one. And none of these are going to look appropriate. So if you do want to use the analog filters that are built in for FPGA cores, you will need to use the default profile. And as you can see, the effects look completely different. But now that we've brought this back to normal, let's go ahead and quit this core. And that is it for the Super Game Boy. Now, the next core is going to be an actual handheld core. We're going to use the Game Gear. And as you can see, just like before, the Game Gear is currently filling up the whole screen, which would be nice, except that it is not perfectly integer scaling. So what we need to do is first go hit the analog button, go to core settings, display mode, mode settings, size, integer. What that does is it gives us a perfect seven times integer scale to 1080p, which is then scaled to 4K to give us a 14 times scale. And this assumes square pixels, but the Game Gear did not have square pixels. It actually had a four by three aspect ratio. So the pixels were a little wider than they were tall, but we will get there. Um, the first thing we want to do is hit the ADC button on the RetroTank remote, which brings us to the HDMI receiver setup menu. Increase input pixels to seven, because we know that it is a seven times scale to 1080p. Hit the scale button on the remote and increase vertical prescale to one seventh. And then go down to scaling mode and change that to auto fill integer, which gives us a perfect 14 times scale. Let's adjust the top, bottom, left and right trims until they hit the border of the screen and that will give us the original 160 by 144 screen for the game gear but as i mentioned game gear did not have square pixels so let's go to scaling mode and change the scaling mode to freeform 
We are already on our 15 times scale for the vertical. We just need to change the horizontal to 2880, which gives us a four by three, uh, four by three aspect ratio for Game Gear games. So as I mentioned before, you are not able to use the analog filters in conjunction with the with the analog pocket. I just using this as, as an example so that you can see that it does not look correct. If you would like, you can use you can go into the SFX menu by pressing that button and then changing the um, changing it to either LCD RGB or LCD BGR. It's slightly different, very similar though. Or if you'd like, you can use one of the mono effects and the mono effects will show a rectangle that is four by three, not 16 by nine, which is authentic to the Game Gear. And that is it for the Game Gear. Finally, well, let's quit this. And let's open up the Wonder Swan, which will be our final it's Wonder Swan color, which will be the final core that we are using. As you can see, the Retro Tank 4K will um, fill up the whole screen, but the which is kind of okay for the Wonder Swan color because it does it is does scale that way. But from the previous things that we've done, the Sorry, from the previous uh, profiles that we've done, one we know that this isn't going to integer scale, it is fractionally scaled to 1080p and then scaled to 4K. So what we're going to do is hit the analog button, go to core settings, display mode, mode settings, size, and then hit integer scale. This gives us a seven times scale in both directions, which lets us know that we need to to make it a seven times prescale. So the first thing we're gonna do is hit the ADC button, which takes us to the HDMI receiver setup menu, and increase input pixels to seven, and then we are going to hit scale, go down to vertical prescale, and increase vertical prescale till it hits one seventh. We're gonna to go to scaling mode and change from autofill to autofill integer which gives a perfect 14 times scale of the picture. And finally, what we are going to do is increase, decrease the top, bottom, left, and right prescale, sorry, uh, top, bottom, left, and right trims until it hits the border of the, uh, border of the picture. And that gives us the original 224 by 144 picture of the Wonder Swan color, and it is perfectly 15 times scaled to 4K. The only issue with this core is that, from my understanding, the Wonder Swan has a 75 hertz screen. This is only going to play in. Um, this is only playing in 60 hertz, so it is going to jump a little bit from time to time for this. But if you would like, you can again go into the SFX menu which is the processing effects setup menu, go down to function, and then either use the LCD RGB, LCD BGR, or mono scanline filters so that you can get the effect that you would like. So that takes care of the Wonder Swan core, and that takes care of the handheld cores for the analog pocket.